Hello and welcome back to the channel, I'm Show Wizards. I'm going to take a look at setting up a snow mission for the updated Seasons mod. I'm just using a sample mod map here of Felsbrunn. Um, but, uh, you know, the process would be very similar for whatever map you're going to apply it to. So I'm just going to create a transform group. I'm just going to name this one Seasons Contracts. You can name this whatever you, whatever you want that's appropriate. <clears throat> And then I'm going to create a new transform group and I'm going to cut that one and paste it into there. So this will be my mission one. So I'm going to call this snow mission one. Like so. And I'm going to create three more transform groups. Cut those and paste them into my first mission here. And I'm going to call this one clear area this one will be my drop area and this one will be sign um, and this particular transform group also will be where the uh, marker is put on the PDA um, for the mission itself so we want to put that where the mission is going to show up or where you where you need to do the mission so i'm going to use the interactive placement control b and just click that there like so and then when i look at the pda map i will get a white dot on the map which i'll show you when we get into game and accept the mission uh, the contract we'll get a white dot which will then de designate that that's where the mission needs to be carried out um so then for <coughs> This particular transform group that also doubles up for um, any objects that we want to have to show the player where the mission um, is needs to be carried out more specifically, because there's no um, other markers that are going to be available. So you could you know lay out wherever your mission is going to be generated, but once it's all covered in snow, um, as a player you're not going to know exactly what area needs to be cleared. Um, unless we put some sort of marker system to help the player identify where that, is, where that area actually is. So what I'm going to do is just use some simple primitive cubes here and scale them up and down and whatever else um, appropriately, but you can make some fancy signs or whatever else to uh, designate the certain areas. So I'm just going to create a primitive cube. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another transform group. I'm going to put that one inside the sign transform group and i'm going to name this my clear area again you can call that whatever you want and then this one here i'm going to cut that and paste it into the clear area transform group and then i'm just going to scale some bits so i'll do points point two six and point two because we want this to be poking up out of the ground above the snow so using these kinds of markers here won't really work that well because um, once they're covered in snow, the player's not going to be able to see them. So you want something that's going to be above the snow for the player to see it quite clearly. So I'll just move that one back to here somewhere like this. <clears throat> That'll be fine. I would recommend not to put it up too close to the buildings uh, because there may not be seasons masks created under those buildings and things like that. And you might find that the snow that's then on the ground uh, that's part of the mission will be under underneath the building and you won't be able to gain access to it you won't be able to complete the mission so don't put it up too close to certain but some of the buildings um you know depending on what those buildings are and whether they've got seasons masks underneath them and whatever else <clears throat> these are placeables so potentially they won't have a seasons mask around them um because in different farm modes um, when they're not there in farm manager or start from scratch, this area, entire area will be covered with snow. Uh, so <clears throat> you don't want to have the mission uh, where it's going to be causing you issues not being able to get to snow under buildings. So just sort of away from the building slightly is fine. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to create some duplicates to mark out an area. And then we can also use that to... Um, help us define our area for the mission itself. So I'm not going to again get too fancy with this, so I'll just do like so. And then I'll just go up to maybe here. 
and then across to somewhere here. <clears throat> That'll be fine. And then we'll bring this one back, this one to here. That'll be great. And then I can define my area within those markers. That's fine. Then what I'll do is I'll take this transform group, copy that entire one and bring it over. And then I can define my drop off, drop off area somewhere over here. So <clears throat> I'll rename this one to drop area, just so I know what it is. And then I can just give myself a bit more space to work with. So I'll drag that one across. And what I'll do is I'll take the translate Z, copy that, and then put that into all of those. Like so, and you want to give yourself a, a fairly good size drop off area. Um, the way that heaps work within the game and things like that. If you only have a small area, you might find the heap gets too big too quickly and you're going to run out of space to tip your snow. Um, these areas are going to be, if you don't own the land, these areas are going to be temporarily assigned to you to complete the mission. Uh, so you don't want to um, run out of space. <clears throat> to tip the snow because you're not going to be able to put it anywhere else other than that designated area um, unless you own some land somewhere you know you're happy to tip snow on your own land you can do that by all means but um, depending on where the mission is and all the rest of it or whether you own the land or not um, anywhere on the map uh, you're going to be solely relying on the area the drop off area to tip the snow into. Now the drop off area itself has nothing to do with the completion of the mission. This is a clear area, clear snow area, so uh, clear snow mission. So as long as you clear the snow from the designated area, uh, that's good enough. You don't, this, this drop off area is not required. You don't, um, the, the completion of the mission doesn't rely on that drop off area. It's just giving you temporary access to some, some land so that you can have an area to drop off snow. Um, but if you wanted to take the snow to your own land and tip it there, you would still be able to complete the mission perfectly fine. Now there is um, some restrictions from what I can work out for the drop off area. Trailers will not work. You can use a bucket on a wheel loader, telehandler, whatever else, but you can't use trailers. So you can't put the snow in a trailer and tip it into the drop off area on temporary access land. Or temporary own land but you can fill the trailer up with snow and then tip it on your own land and still complete the mission perfectly fine there's nothing wrong with that but um, I think intentionally the uh, mission system has been set up where it's restricting you to only use certain equipment in the drop-off area um, <clears throat> so yeah that's fine but when you're setting up your mission just bear that in mind so don't have your drop-off area um, up in the mountain somewhere over here because taking the snow from here at 2,500 litres a bucket up to there is just not really going to be cost effective and um, you know and, and whatever else so um, when you're setting up your mission just bear in mind if you're not going to be tipping the snow on your own land and you're going to rely on the drop-off area to set up the drop-off area in somewhat close proximity to the, the clear area and base your mission around that sort of setup. Okay, so now that we've got that, I'm going to define the actual areas. So <clears throat> we'll go into the, um, I'm going to create some more transform groups. So I'm going to create three more transform groups. The bottom two here, I'm going to highlight and cut and then paste into this one. And I'm going to take that one, cut it, and then click on the clear area and paste it into there. And then with the um, first one selected, I'm just going to again use the interactive placement, control B and click somewhere there like so, that will be the starting point. And then this one here, I'll drag that back up to um, wherever over here, that will be fine. I'm going to take the translate X from there, copy that and paste it into this one. And then I'm just going to drag it across to somewhere like so. And this now will be my defined area for the snow mission clear area. I need to set up your transform groups in that scenario. So this will be start, height, and width, for example, and that will create our parallelogram for that area. 
Now what I'll do is I'll take the entire transform group hierarchy and I'm going to make, make a copy of that with control C, click on the drop area, control V, and then what I can do is just drag that entire hierarchy across to this side for my drop area. And then I'll just take these ones. So that one's fine. And then I'll just make that one a bit wider to cover the drop off area that I've um, set with the markers. Okay, so now that we've got all of that, um, what we need to do is make the sign transform group invisible. So to do that, we take the tick out of the visibility box. We do this because the script makes them um, visible. But if you leave them visible in GE, they will always be visible until you complete the mission for the first time, and then they will disappear. But uh, that's not the way it's meant to work. They're meant to be invisible until you accept the contract, and then they become visible and then they go invisible again once you have completed the contract. Uh, but to do that, we need to make sure that in Giant Center here, we make this transform group, the sign transform group, invisible by taking that tick out of the visibility box. And then everything will be invisible at the start of a new game safe. Because, it, you know, theoretically, you're not going to get that much snow. Um, depending on the geo that you're using, you might get snow straight away, but um, you don't want those to be visible, even though you're not, actually doing the contract because even though you're getting offered the contract you don't have to accept it so um, you know you don't want those to be there all the time uh, you only want them to be showing up when you're actually doing the mission itself so yeah we do that and then what we're going to do is set up some user attributes so clicking on the main mission the mission transform group here um, we're going to open up the user attributes window <clears throat> and then we're going to put some user attributes together so the first one here is going to be my clear area index. And this is going to be an integer. And then my next one here is going to be my drop area index. And that will also be an integer. And then my sign index. And uh, again, an integer. And these are just for the, the clear area, drop area, and sign, they just join those together so it knows what's going on. Um, and then we identify what the actual index number is by clicking on these. And if we look in the attributes window, index path, the last number here is what we assign. So this one's a zero, this one is a one, and then this one is a two. So that's the numbers that we need to enter in here. So zero, one, and two. And we're going to set up a script callback so that uh, it loads in the script and whatever else. So we're going to go on create script callback add. And this will be mod on create dot snow contract node. <clears throat> Make sure that the uppercase and lowercase is all the right places, otherwise it won't work. So we have mod on create dot snow contract node. And then lastly, we need to put in a name for our mission. So we put for our new user attribute name string and add. And I'm just going to use the um, name for the transform group here. And then we'll put that into there. So snow mission one. But again, call that whatever you whatever you want in there. Okay, so now that we've got all of that set up, uh, we go ahead and save the map. And then I'll bring up the XML. So depending on your folder structure and whatever else, um, you might need to um, look somewhere else for your map XML. But for me on this one, it's maps and then mapde.xml. Look something similar to this. If you have a map that's already seasons ready, you will have the seasons tags for your uh, seasons mask in here already. Don't enter them again. Um, so you don't want to have multiple seasons tags. Just add the mission information within the pre-existing seasons tags, uh, either below or above where your seasons mask information is. If you don't have or you have a map that is not set up for seasons or prepared for seasons, you won't probably have the seasons tags, so you'll need to enter those in as well. Uh, so something similar to what we've got here. And then we need to actually set up our mission parameters. 
So we've got our mission and our name. This name here, the snow mission one, needs to match in exactly what you've got for your name in the user attributes. So make sure that they both match. Type of snow, that always has to be snow for this particular setup because it's a snow mission. Don't put anything else in there other than snow. And our reward scale equals one. You can, um, you'll need to have a play around with that and see what the uh, reward scale is, uh, what you're actually going to get paid to do the mission itself. Um, and that will determine, you know, it'll kind of determine whether it's actually worth doing or not, um, depending on whether you've got equipment to actually clear the snow and things like that. Because um, <clears throat> if you have to buy or lease equipment, um, a bag of salt uh, or, you know, pallet of salt, or whatever you want to call it, big bag of salt, is quite expensive so if you're going to use the salt spreader and then you've got at least the salt spreader and the mission reward is less than a bag of salt then you know it's not really worth doing the mission in the first place so you'll need to kind of determine what the reward scale um, value is going to be so increase that or decrease that depending on you know what you're going to get out of it to make it worth doing in the first place then we have our npc name i've got npc underscore 11 but you can put in there any of the NPCs you want, 1 to 20 I think it is, so um, that's not tied into anything, so any NPC you want. I would probably recommend for whatever area, so if you have like this particular area here, and this is owned by Eric Roberts, um, then you would want to have possibly Eric offering you the snow mission because he owns the land, but um, if it's owned by somebody else, and you're going to then get Eric to give you the mission, which I've got Eric set up to give me this mission. That would not necessarily seem right because, you know, he doesn't own the land. So why is he giving me the mission? So you want to kind of set it up, um, I think, personally, uh, determined, on, you know, based around the, the person who owns the land around the area and whatever else. So you need to determine what, uh, what NPC is controlling this land. So if I was to perhaps maybe go into the Farmlands XML, and then look up <clears throat> farmland ID 31. This is NPC 14 who owns all of that land. So I would then come into this XML here and change, <clears throat> change that to 14 because that would be appropriate for the person, uh, the NPC that's actually, that actually owns that land. Um, but yeah, have a look at that and just determine whichever but you can use any one you want. They're not, it's not tied into anything at all there. So any NPC you want to use is, is going to work perfectly fine. Then we have our location. So obviously for my location, I've got the farmhouse um, and that's fine. So whatever you're going to set that up to, but if you've got multiple farmhouses um, or whatever else, then you might need to be a bit more specific. So it'd be farmhouse central, farmhouse south, farmhouse north or whatever else. And then we put in our text for the actual mission itself. So um, for me, again, as I say, this is going to be a farm owner's wife needs to go shopping. So I'm going to be tasked to clear the snow from behind the house. So we have farm owner's wife needs to go shopping, clear snow from behind the house. And then the actual farmland ID is an optional thing. Um, if you have a mission to clear the snow on a certain set of uh, piece of land, uh, like the farmhouse here and round here. I don't own this land, uh, so I would get offered the mission potentially. If later on in my um, Let's Play or whatever else in my playtime, I then bought this land, <clears throat> entering the farmland ID here um, will basically prevent the mission from being offered to me anymore. Because I now own the land, I won't get the mission anymore. But if you if you want to be given the mission, even if you own the land, then basically you just need to remove that that um, <clears throat> parameter and just have it like that. Then you will always get offered the, the mission irregardless of whether you own the land or not. Uh, so again, that's kind of up to you um, as a mission builder to determine whether you want that mission to be offered at all times or whether you only want it to be offered to people who don't own the land. And then you just need to define, uh, determine what farmland ID you need to put in there. Um, so in the giant editor, open up your terrain editing window and then activate your info layer paint mode. Come down to the info layer painting section, switch over to farmland and then with your mouse 
cursor hovering over the um, area of land that you've set the mission up for. Control R will then highlight that area. And then over here, the layer value will not be updated automatically. So what you'll need to do is find one of the info channels that has got a tick box ticked and take the tick out and put it back in again. And then it will update. As you can see there, my layer value is 31. And that is the same as the farmland ID. So this is going to be 31 for me. Um, so, you know, determine whatever it is for you and then enter that in. If you don't want the mission to be offered to people that um, own the land. So once you buy the land, if you enter that parameter, you will no longer get the mission offered to you. And that's pretty much that. So what I'm going to do then is um, I'll save that again just to make sure that it's updated and everything. Uh, so, you know, take a screenshot, pause the video, take a screenshot of that information there or whatever else you need to do um, and then enter in your appropriate text um, and uh, mission name and all the rest of it and whatever else you need to set up for your particular particular snow mission. OK, so go ahead and save that. Make sure I haven't uh, walked something up there. That looks OK. Um, it's fine. OK, so what we'll do then is I'll pause and then I'll just quickly go into game and we'll have a look at the actual snow mission itself. OK, so I've got to select um, a few bits of equipment here. I've got a trailer, tractor and trailer, wheel loader and bucket, and I've also got the uh, a tractor with the um, snow plow and uh, salt spreader from Seasons Realism as Modding. Um, and uh, yeah, what we'll do is I'm just going to cheat in some snow here, so I'm just going to use the command RM add snow and I'll add a couple layers. <clears throat> uh, Mission um, contracts, there's no contracts in there at the moment. <clears throat> so I'm going to basically use some commands to generate some com generate the uh, contracts because I'm in snow, um, I'm in spring and I'm not fast forwarding all the way to winter on the off chance I may get some snow. Um, so <clears throat> what I think I'll do first of all is um, let's uh, as you can see we've got no none of the posts that I added in the primitive cubes they're not being displayed at the moment because I made that transform group invisible or took the visibility tick out of the box they're not showing up fantastic so again we'll just uh, use some commands rm <coughs> generate missions then when i go back into here i have my snow clearing and my npc that i designated and then we have our information so we have farmhouse snow clearing and then all the information there the money we're going to get paid to do this um, and then <clears throat> farm owner's wife needs to go shopping, clear snow from behind the house. Same information that I entered into the XML and whatever else. So I go ahead and accept the contract. Progress is at zero. Uh, now, obviously, the equipment I've bought outweighs um, the cost that I'm going to get for the mission itself. Uh, so again, you need to bear that in mind for the reward scale and whatever else. If you already own the equipment to start with, then it's just going to be fuel and maintenance costs. So that might be not might not be so bad. But, um, you know, snow is not something that happens all year round. So you may not have the um, the plow and the uh, salt spreader um, right away. You might end up having to buy those. And if you're going to end up buying those or even leasing them just to do a snow mission, a bag of salt costs more than what you're going to get paid out for this particular mission. So, again, it would not necessarily be re a rewarding enough to make it worth doing so you need to have a play around with that reward scale to make it worth um, actually accepting the contract in the first place um, and you can now see that I've accepted the contract and our posts have appeared uh, both in the clear area and also in the drop area so that is working as intended fantastic so what I'm going to do then is um, I'll grab a bucket of snow here and what we'll see straight away is if I lower the bucket down into the snow because I don't own this land and I'll just show you that if I go into the map here um, I'll show you a couple of things you might not be able to see it very well because unfortunately the uh, the marker for the um, house is in the way so you might need to take that into consideration when putting down your markers but just underneath that is actually the marker for the mission itself um, I didn't take that into consideration when I placed it down but there is a marker just underneath there 
um, to show where the mission is going to be based. Um, but uh, yeah, unfortunately you can't see it through that other marker, but uh, I don't know if I may be able to turn that off. There we go. So if I turn that off, you can now see the white dot is showing up. When we complete the mission, I'll show you that again that that then disappears. Um, so if I go into farmlands, you can see I don't own this land. I, I need to buy it, so I don't own the land there. Um, <clears throat> so I've been given temporary access to this land uh, just in the designated areas. So I can't pick up any of the snow with the bucket outside of that defined area. But as soon as I go in the defined area for the mission, I will then be able to start picking up the snow, no problem whatsoever. Uh, so if I then take this one bucket, and I'll just show you in the actual contract, we are now up to 7% because I've removed some of the snow from that area. So I'll take this one bucket load over to the drop area, and you'll be able to then see that I can tip this. If I actually stop here, before I get to there, and I'll tip the bucket, you can see you do not have access to this land. So I can't just tip it anywhere because I don't own the land. But as soon as I get into this defined area here, the drop-off area, I can tip it out perfectly fine. So all of that is working as far as a bucket goes, no problem whatsoever. So now if I pick up another bucket full of snow from the mission clear area, the defined area that we need to clear the snow from, I really wish these things would go faster using a mouse, but hey ho is what it is so if I now pick up some more snow here what I'll do is I'll just grab the uh, tractor and trailer and we'll put some snow into there Now even though the script has actually given me temporary access to certain areas of land um, to do the mission, it's only given me certain temporary access. If I tried to now tip the snow out of the trailer back into the clear area, I'll bring up the F1 menu, I've got no tip commands at all, but if I try and force unload with Control i it's going to immediately tell me you do not have access to this land and it will tell me that no matter where I go with this trailer until I enter land that I actually do own and then it will allow me to tip just like any other product or whatever else um, so by coming to the drop off area again control I no commands for tipping at all even though I am in the area that it's given me temporary access to so it has limited me to using certain equipment um, on that basis which is you know again fine you just need to bear that in mind when you're setting up your mission um, not to put the drop-off area too far away because you're going to be carting it one bucket full at a time which is only <clears throat> however much that is um, in this particular case 3,000 litres at a time so you know uh, if there's six layers of snow down here at 3,000 litres ago that's going to take you a considerable amount of time to um, remove it so I can pick this up in the bucket no problem and again I can then tip this out again in the in this area no problem I don't own the land it's given me temporary access but again limited temporary access I can use the bucket no problem so that's fine and again I can then take this and um, put that into the drop-off area So the drop-off area, I've not said before, is just temporary access to a certain area of land um, for you to tip the snow into, but it has absolutely nothing to do with the completion of the mission. As long as you clear the um, area, the defined area of all snow, and of course the uh, clock's caught up with me now and it's failed the mission, but I can reset that again, that's fine. Um, as long as you clear all the snow from this area you can tip it wherever you want um, if the uh, system allows you to so if you own some land somewhere uh, on the map and you're happy to put it in a trailer and transport it to your own land and tip it there you will still complete the mission um, the the drop-off area is only to give you access temporary access 
to an area where you can tip the snow. Um, that's all it's there for. Uh, but again, limiting you to certain equipment, i.e. a bucket. Now, if we take this into consideration though, which is specifically designed for this by Realism as Modding, then that's a completely different story altogether because this overrules everything. Um, it doesn't care if you own the land or not from what I've seen so far with it. So what I'll do is I'll just quickly accept the uh, failed contract there and then I'll put some more snow down. So we'll just do the RM add snow and we'll just put two layers down again. And I'll regenerate the mission. So I have my snow clearing contract back again. So I'll accept the contract and again we get all of our markers and everything. And if I jump into this. <clears throat> now remembering again with the bucket I was unable to pick up snow outside of the uh, predefined area for the mission. But if I use this, I don't know about the salt, the um, spreader but if I actually lower this down and then start to use this it will work anywhere that it sees snow no problem doesn't matter if I own the land or not so this is the equipment to use um, to do the mission in my opinion I mean I think it's been specifically designed for this anyway uh, it just needed the update to um, the uh, seasons mod to make this more um, useful if you like for lack of better words. Um, so with this, again, remembering that the drop-off area is only just giving you temporary access to the land to give you ability to drop the snow somewhere and got nothing to do with the actually completion of the mission, I can come into here and if I then angle this some way that it's going to put the snow <coughs> outside of the area, I can come into here, lower this down, turn on my spreader, and then come through here <clears throat> and push the snow out of the way we we'll come back into here 28 percent so I'll turn this turn the salt off salt spreader off and I'll just keep going back and push the snow all the way over there now if you've got like six layers of snow this might not work quite so well maybe um, we'll put the uh, salt spreader back on again but I'm just going to be pushing the snow over best I can obviously once it gets to a certain uh, height might not be able to push it very easily anymore but um, if we go back in again now 51% we'll keep going with this until I can't go anymore so we'll keep pushing that snow over to the one side there with the salt spreader on clearing any small parts behind me a more powerful tractor would possibly do a better job of this. But we'll keep pushing the snow out of the way, like so. And we're up to 74%. So for this I might want to maybe angle this thing over and then push the snow over this way a bit. Whatever, you know. As long as you clear the snow out of the area, wherever you do it is not really that important I guess so what I'll do is I'll just um, push this thing this way now and then we'll come back into here and push the snow over a bit further if we can again turning on the salt spreader clear anything behind me and we're up to 93% so just a little bit more to do <clears throat> now the downside of using this um, because it is not restricted to anything at all um, you might because you can move snow anywhere regardless of whether you own the land or not you won't know s quite so specifically um, if you're actually moving snow in the area that you need to be moving snow from uh, whereas with the bucket, for example, that only will work with snow on un, you know, that um, 
on land that you don't own. So, but we have now completed the contract. We've now got to 100%, mission's completed, and I can collect that, and all the markers disappear and everything. So, you know, um, choose your equipment for the area that you need to work and whatever else. I think this is, you know, now that uh, we have the missions, this is now something that's going to be uh, a must because it really does work well for doing the mission. Uh, whereas with, if you're using the bucket, you are going to be relying on the drop-off area um, more so. Obviously, as I say, you can then load the snow into a trailer and take it to your own land. So, um, you know, you could do it that way if you wanted to and tip it on your own land and still be able to complete the mission, no problem. Uh, but uh, I think that this probably is the better way to go, pushing the snow with the plough off of the area and then <clears throat> any small parts of snow left behind the salt spreader. But again, you've got to take into consideration the cost of all of that, uh, the cost of the equipment, whether you've got a tractor powerful enough to run it all, um, against the actual reward scale what you're going to get paid for the mission itself uh, so yeah have a look at that and see what you can get out of it but um, really looking forward to getting into more of the snow mission stuff um, you know something I've wanted to do with snow for a long time have a have an actual purpose for it um, you know you get to you get to winter you can't plow you can't cultivate can't spray you can't do much at all of anything uh, and if you've got no animals it's like well <laughs> what do i do now um so this is definitely going to be um something i'm going to look forward to uh playing around with a bit more and uh yeah so i think you know snow missions fantastic i'm sure wizard thanks very much for watching i'll catch you in the next one